We don't know about you, but we have an excellent feeling about this. Don't listen to him. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Easter eggs in Solo, A Star Wars Story. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at references, plot details, and cameos you might have missed in this Han Solo origin story. If you haven't seen the film yet, consider this your spoiler alert. Number 10. The Tamtel Screech Disguise During the Kessel heist, Han and his crew disguised themselves as slavers in order to fit in. Woody Harrelson's Tobias Beckett can notably be seen wearing a mask made of Gondar tusks. If this getup looks familiar, that's because it's the same costume Lando Calrissian wore in Return of the Jedi. Assuming the alias of Tamtel Screech, Lando kept his face mostly concealed while infiltrating Jabba the Hutt's palace in an effort to free Han. <laughs> it's good to know this disguise came in handy for our heroes more than once. There's a lesson to be learned here. As far as fashion goes, though, Lando should just stick to his closet of capes. You got a lot of guts coming here, after what you pulled. Number 9. Han's Imperial Origin You're not Imperial Army. You're thieves here to steal equipment for a job, and I want in. In the beginning of Solo, our titular hero signs up with the Galactic Empire in order to escape his pursuers. Although Han has high hopes of becoming a pilot, he winds up working as an Imperial serviceman on the planet Mimbon. Han's luck turns around when he encounters a Wookiee named Chewbacca, whom he frees from captivity. Since when do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great! The canon version of Han and Chewie's first meeting is actually quite similar to the one introduced in the original Expanded Universe. While it doesn't play out the exact same way, the Star Wars Legends version also sees Han enlisting for Imperial service. After stopping a commander from torturing Chewie, Han leaves the Empire and a beautiful friendship begins. <laughs> Number 8. Han vs. Han Han Solo is not only one of the most iconic characters in a galaxy far, far away, but in all of cinema. So it's pretty funny to think that some casual audience members can't seem to get his name right even after all these years. In the films, most people correctly pronounce his name as Han. You're Han Solo! I used to be. Every once in a while, however, somebody will slip up and accidentally call him Han. Lando in particular seems to prefer calling his old buddy Han rather than Han. The filmmakers poke fun at this in Solo when Lando and Han first meet, and Lando condescendingly messes up his name on purpose. Can I ask you a question, Captain Calrissian? Anything, Han. It's Han, but that's okay. Number 7. Lando's Gambling Hello, what have we here? Lando spends a good portion of this movie at the card table, showcasing his early days as a charming gambler. You played before? A couple times, yeah. Captain Lando Carizzi, Han Solo. While he ultimately loses the Millennium Falcon to Han, Lando still walks away a big winner, quite literally. Lando notes that he actually won the deed to an entire moon, which is exactly how he gained control of Cloud City later in his life. Did you win your ship playing cards? I like this kid. The crafty card player also mentions that he doesn't like mining, which is ironic when you consider the fact that Cloud City is one of several Tabana gas mining colonies on the planet Bespin. Lando likely could have just sold control of Cloud City, but the title of Baron Administrator probably sounded too enticing. Number 6. The Millennium Falcon's Transformation Chewie, we're home. When we first see the Falcon in Solo, it appears much cleaner and sleeker than you might recall. The most evident difference is the bow of the Falcon, which has an escape pod installed. This plays an integral part during the Kessel Run, although not in the way you might think. Lando also mentions that he made several modifications. You might wanna buckle up, baby. Most notably equipping a satellite dish and a turbo laser on the bottom. Of course, the laser is destroyed as our heroes thwart off TIE fighters. And in a subtle nod to Return of the Jedi, the dish gets stripped away via gravity well. That was too close. 
Hence why the Falcon looks different in the OG Star Wars trilogy. Well, you tell them that Han Solo just stole back the Millennium Falcon for good. Number five, the cargo container. Throughout Solo, we see our young protagonist pick up all the tools and skills he'll need to become a scruffy looking smuggler. Han's primary mission in the film revolves around Coaxium, a valuable starship fuel that could either give the Empire an extra boost or help jumpstart a rebellion. To hide the Coaxium, Han and his crew use cargo containers that you might recognize. Boy, it's lucky you had these compartments. I use them for smuggling. I never thought I'd be smuggling myself in them. This is ridiculous. Han goes on to use the Falcon's secret compartments for many of his future smuggling jobs. They prove especially beneficial in A New Hope, when the Falcon gets caught in the Death Star's tractor beam, and our heroes take cover to hide from Imperial scanners. Number 4. Kira's Fighting Style the latest in a long line of badass female characters, Kira can both talk and fight her way out of a sticky situation. When asked about the combat moves she demonstrates during the Kessel Heist, she says that it's called Terras Kasi. This fighting style originally appeared in the Expanded Universe, playing a key role in various comics and video games. This isn't the first time Terras Kasi has been exhibited in the official canon. As the elite Praetorian Guard tasked with guarding Supreme Leader Snoke in The Last Jedi are also trained in this martial art. Now, if we could only get a Masters of Terras Kasi reboot with Kira as a playable character. You win. The Force was not strong with this one. Number 3. Aura Singh. Help me. No. For those who've only seen the Star Wars movies, the name Aura Singh probably won't ring any bells. Anyone who's done their homework, however, will know that Aura, like many EU characters, essentially started out as a background character before becoming a more prominent figure in the expanded universe. Don't count on it. The Jedi don't carry grudges. This bounty hunter has also been featured in the official Star Wars canon, teaming up with Boba Fett during the Clone Wars in a revenge plot to assassinate Mace Windu. In Solo, Lando mentions that Beckett was responsible for killing Aura Singh. Well, technically he just pushed her and it was the fall that killed her. We'd love to see a spin-off comic depicting that confrontation. Number 2. The Gold Dice Han's golden dice are one of the most significant symbols in Solo. These lucky charms were initially seen hanging in the Millennium Falcon's cockpit in A New Hope, referencing George Lucas's previous film, American Graffiti. While the dice were missing in The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, they eventually resurfaced in The Last Jedi. During the final act, Luke reunites with Leia and hands her Han's dice. Well, technically a projection of the dice. When Kylo Ren stumbles upon the chance cubes later on, he's forced to reflect on how his father died. Through their appearance in Solo, the dice are given more weight within the Star Wars lore. Number 1. Darth Maul We'll handle this. We'll take the long way. After Obi-Wan Kenobi chopped Darth Maul in half, audiences assumed they'd seen the last of the villain. When Maul made a comeback in the Clone Wars animated series, though, it opened the door for him to return in other Star Wars projects. It's what goes on in here that's hard. Nevertheless, his cameo in Solo still came as a total surprise. Once Kira seizes control from Dryden Voss, she doesn't hesitate to contact Maul, who's now sporting a pair of cybernetic legs. While the scene doesn't last long, it could be hinting at more appearances from Maul in the future. We'd definitely be down for a Darth Maul spin-off, building up to his last stand in Star Wars Rebels. <sighs> Look what has become of you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.